All right, guys, before I get started on this video, I do want to take a minute aside and thank all the people in my first year of firearm ownership, in my first year on YouTube. I'd like to start off by giving a warm, big, big, big thank you to my funky Uncle Matt, Rise Arms. I, shortly after buying my first firearm, I was enrolled in a class that was American Popular Culture. And we had to do a semester long report and I decided to do mine on the second amendment. Being new to firearms, I honestly didn't know much about it. And I reached out to a lot of big YouTubers. Uh, I sent out PMs to a bunch of them. And out of all of them, Matt was the only one that responded. Throughout the semester, Matt fed me information, he fed me knowledge. I mean, almost everything that I know about the second amendment comes from Matt. So. I appreciate him and I thank him for the rest of my life for that. It's really, it's really made me kind of who I am today and, and, and evolved me into the man that I plan to be. So I want to thank Matt Rise Arms. I also want to thank Wayne One One. He's local here in Maryland. He's been my uh, biggest knowledge source as far as local laws, local forums, getting me involved in things like that. Me and him talk probably weekly and we just shoot the shit. We never get a chance to meet up and go out shooting because our schedules are always messed up. But, you know, he probably is my best uh, local local uh, guy. And um, I also want to send out a big shout out to the Haas USMC and G-Webs. I met them uh, early this fall and uh, we've remained in contact. And the knowledge that they have given me on actual firearms themselves has also proved invaluable. I thank them so much for their friendship, for their knowledge, the time that they actually uh, spend to answer my novice, you know, like my really novice questions. So, so I'd like to thank all my YouTube friends and the entire YouTube community. Um, I'm a first generation American, so I don't have the history of firearms in my family. I never really had anyone to take me out, take me shooting. The first time I went shooting, I was already an adult. And I went to the range maybe about three times before I bought my own firearm. So all the knowledge that I have about the Second Amendment and firearms is thanks to the YouTube community and my friends that helped me out along the way. So you guys have proved invaluable to me, and um, I appreciate all the knowledge. Thank you. This right here is the SLR 107F. As I mentioned earlier, it does have the folding stock. I'll show you how to fold that a little bit later. It's a stamped receiver. It's not the FR. It does not have the rail on the side. I do have a thirty round, a couple thirty round magazines on it. Um, it does have the chrome line muzzle brake. Let me see if I can get a shot of that in there. I don't think you're going to be able to see that. Uh, you can't see that. But you can see the silver lining on the inside, so it's chrome lined. Um, as I said, this thing is built like a tank. When you pick this up, you feel its firmness, its rigidity, compared to other things like the Wasser. Um, if you looked at my other video, I got this. This was in shipping when Newtown happened. I still had my IOAK, and I had purchased this um, based on the recommendation of some of my friends. Uh, originally what I wanted was to go tactical, so I wanted a stamped receiver because I wanted to put a telescoping uh, tube on it, but um, when I saw this, I figured the folding stock was good enough, and it, it actually folding on the side lets you fire from the hip a little bit easier without the folding stock still protruding, so I originally wanted the, the telescoping stock, but I settled for the folding just because that was the only arsenal that I could find like that. I didn't want an arsenal Sega. I wanted to go for a legit arsenal. So I stuck with this and I remain with the stamped receiver. There are a bunch of milled receivers out there right now, but with that, uh, you can't put really uh, rails in the fore end right here. So that's why I decided to go with the stamp, even though I did give up the rail system. But because I knew or I, I was already aware that there's the AKARS out there, um, I wasn't really too worried about that. And I like that system a little bit better because these kind of make it sit a little bit high most of the time. So. I'm looking to ordering that sometime this upcoming week. The forend will probably come a lot later. A little bit on broke terms. My goddaughter broke my laptop, so I had to buy a new laptop. But um, yeah. 
So originally, you know, definitely, if you want to tag it out, go stamp, receiver. I don't care what it is. Um, but when you pick this thing up, I mean, you know it's quality. I mean, I've picked up the IO that I had before. Um, I've picked up washers. I've shot washers. And you can actually feel the money difference in this when you shoot it. I also, um, as far as the IO, after I received this was when the whole scare came out. I took the IO to a to a gun show and I sold it for nine hundred dollars, so it made up almost for the whole payment of this. But now let me show you how to close this thing. All right, so get this thing to close. If you look right there, it's got a button. It's also got a hinge right here. What you want to do is push, I guess, against the hinge, so it relieves pressure on this side. And then as you push on the hinge, you then need to fold back. On the bottom right here, where the hinge locks in, right there, I also put in a little bit of frog lube just to loosen it up. I really haven't shot it that much. I shot it just a little bit just to make sure it cycles and works properly, but I didn't even bother to sight it in because with the, with the Parabellum rail system, there's going to be a new sight on here. So I really didn't want to waste the ammo to actually sight it in. But I have taken apart, frog lubed it, she's ready to go, and this thing is a champ.